Uh, as the creator of uh, Mara Jade, do you... <laughs> Wait! I am not the creator of Mara Jade. And I want you to get out of this office right now. I'm sorry, Zan. No way. You brought no it on way. Your, you brought it on yourself. I don't want you here. I'm so out. sorry, George. I didn't think it would go like this. Out. Zan, I got your voucher. <laughs> out! There. I'm sorry about that. I'm so sorry. We'll have him, like, burned and we'll I don't even know who that guy is. So I sit there all day long. Oh, that, that brings me angry. George Lucas brings me joy, brings me so much joy. You were talking about how angry, pissed off Matt Damon brings oh, you yeah. joy, and it brings me joy too. But the angry, pissed off George Lucas, that clip <laughs> brings me so That's, much joy. I don't even know who that guy was. <laughs> George is like, How did he get into this room? Uh, and it, and of course, like every billionaire, he's got one of those doors that's the button push, close and open. <laughs> of course, he's got one of those doors, and I'm sure he's got that in every room of his house at Lucasfilm Ranch. And I'm also convinced, and this may not be true, but I <laughs> I want to believe it's true. He's got, of course, the the Matt Lauer button. You sit at. You don't even have to get up from your table. You can just hit that button. It opens the door for people to come in. It closes the door when they enter. And that door is not to be opened until I put the, push the button. <laughs> Damn it. Well, I mean, oh. if you can afford it, why not? And you can probably, oh. and if people don't know about it, you can like trick people into thinking maybe there's a ghost. So that's, that's more, more fun in games. That door just closed by itself. <laughs> and I shouldn't joke about the Matt Lauer door because I mean, that was what he was using his, his powers for was evil. Oh, right. Oh. That in that circumstance is no good. But uh, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of those automatic doors in other circumstances where it's perfectly. <laughs> it's, it's great. Just it's cool great. to have an automatic door. You can pretend you have the force. You know, it's all. Oh, you know what? He I, now that's George Lucas. If you're watching, and we know that's never going to happen, but <laughs> if you were to be watching, you should have a door that that is like runs on like. Like a uh, auto, what they got? Uh, uh, for, like a, what do they call it? Like for um, runs on kind of like uh, your movements. They have a they have a, a mechanical way that you can run things. They're they're working on like remote controls that are run by your hands swiping. They oh, they mean like having a robot or something mimic your emotions or yeah yeah something to that they, they, something to that degree so if he could get the and george has got the money for that tech build that into his doors to where he uses the force to close oh, open oh it. yeah it just tracks your motion if you go like this motion track exactly yeah motion tracking technology if you go like that it's like whoa <laughs> get on that george uh, you you you've got the money to have that built into your smart home you go and, like this and your desk like flies through a window <laughs> Yeah, oh, <laughs> worth it. Love it. It's worth it. Spend the money on it, George. Uh, I think we we've convinced him to do it. All right. Coming up on Thunder Pop today on the 150th episode of Thunder Pop. Ooh. I'm joined by YouTube sensation, and I got it right this time because I remember last time you were here. Uh. I I said uh, YouTube content creator, creator, host, <laughs> and and David. From Geek News Now, he said YouTube sensation. YouTube, that was I was honored by that YouTube sensation. I wouldn't say I've gotten there quite yet, but uh, you know, if other people are going to call me it, I'm not going to stop that from happening. Well, and you always ramp it up. I, I heard a, a, a wise uh, advice the other day. Whatever the story is, go with the best version of it, like the the one that props hmm. you up the most. I like that. So whatever the the title is, prop it up some. And uh, so YouTube sensation, though I think is completely fair. And uh, another <laughs> I just do so much. It, it's too long of a title if you try and list all the different things that I do. It's like singing comedy, like da, 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 da. it's like just say YouTube sensation, and that it, you know it's a sh it's much shorter, concise. It's it packs a big punch. You know, there's a lot that could be mm -hmm. in there, and you don't know, so you want to find out. It's it's all a done deal. It's a done deal. Another sensation says, hi, guys, Debbie Barton from this uh, great way to set up uh, your show on Monday nights. 
MCU Mondays over at Geek News Now's YouTube yeah. channel. Chris, that's my Debbie. co-host. Mm -hmm. I just recorded a new intro, um, so that it actually says at the end oh. with Debbie and Chris instead of just "Here's your host, Chris," because she, oh. uh, since we started doing it, she's been there every episode. So I was like, "You're my co-host now," and yeah. with the new song, because I had to update the song because the first song oh, yeah. was like, "Yeah, talking about Falcon, Winter Soldier, and Loki coming next," and I was like, "Loki's over. We can't keep using this song. <laughs> I have yeah. to make a new one." So yeah, yeah that's. MCU Mondays on Geek News Now every mm -hmm. Monday night at 9.30 Eastern. 30. We talk about what's going on in the MCU. We watch trailers. We have a lot of fun. We have special guests sometimes like this guy. I've, I've been on. It's always an honor to come on. Yeah, fun show. They react to whatever is, is in the Marvel content world is is rolling out that after you know, the week before. Uh, so, yeah, Mar Marvel Monday. And uh, also... Uh, it's a vase productions. The other, your own YouTube channel. That is my personal channel. I do a lot of comedy reactions there. You might get previews of stuff I'm working on. I do logo work. I do all different kinds of stuff over there on it's a vase productions. Most people I think are there for the comedy reactions, which I need to do another one of soon, but yeah, <laughs> I had to finish watching bad batch for this. So I was like, no time. <laughs> do it tomorrow. Glad you got in and watched it. Oh, uh, Eskel Tester. Uh, am I saying Eskel? I know you use the other name on, on, on your other social media. Uh, Netherlands checking in at 3.40 a.m. That's a true fan. Appreciate you being here. Mis Mr. Tester, yeah, checking in. Uh, he said 3.40 a.m. there watching. Um, wow. And also, Andrew Cecil Robertson from the U.K. Hi, pal. Hope things are going well. You know, it's funny. It's so... Uh, this is so weird. I was just thinking about Andrew today because I haven't talked or um, corresponded with Andrew in quite a while. Uh, Andrew is the uh, genius that created that opening for this show that I'm going to play here in a second. Oh, uh, wow. That, yeah. Now, I collaborated with another artist, another artist on the music, and I wrote the song, but then he, he recorded it for me. But the uh, um, uh, Cecil did all the animation and the work, put that together for me. Uh, I gave him some ideas of things we wanted, and then boom, he just ran with it, and and awesome. ten ten times more than what I had ever even imagined <laughs> he, would, he would come up with. But Cecil, if you ever need uh, intros for your live stream, give him a plug here. Uh, he does those, and I think he still does it. He's very talented. He's a, he's a man of many talents, but he does that as well. So it's good to hear from uh, Cecil. I haven't talked to him in a while. Um, we got a fun show tonight. Gonna be reacting to funness. And uh, I, I feel pretty I feel pretty good about about tonight's show. I think it's going to be it's going to be a, what do they call it a humdinger. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're going to be reacting to uh, the Bad Batch finale, which just happened. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to be reacting to the Bad Batch finale. Love cool that show. Cool beans. Cool beans. And then also. <laughs> The What If premiere, and now they've already had a second episode uh, since we announced this show. So we really got two episodes of What If to react to. So we're, re we're just reacting the hell out of really fun stuff. I'm pretty excited. I did a little <laughs> prep for the show. I you know sometimes I, I prep and sometimes I don't prep. And it's always inter interesting to see which show you're going to get. What like Is it tonight a show he prepped for? Or is this a show he didn't prep for, prep for? So, um, but I prep for this. I feel really good about it. So we'll, um, Chris, are you feeling it? You feel it tonight? The, the electricity? The electricity? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so we got reacts. Chris Cassidy from Geek News. YouTube sensation Chris Cassidy from Geek, <laughs> Geek News. And I got to say that every time now. You don't have to say it every time. I do it. That's fine. No, okay. The first three times of the, of the show, <laughs> and then we can dial it back. It's like Beetlejuice, and it can go back to just Chris after that. Uh, the yeah, uh, we'll we'll you know take off the. Uh, it's not like it's like when you see when you meet Luke Skywalker, it's Jedi Master Luke. I'm sure for the first couple of um, times you talk to him, <laughs> and then you can dial it back, and then it's Luke, and then it's hey dude, That's dude, cool. yeah, the dude. I do respond to that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that it'll start out with that, then Chris, and then hey dude, by the end of the show. And uh yeah, we'll do that. Time for the intro that, that's 
that uh, Andrew made for us. Andrew Cecil. Here you go. Okay, I lied. Yeah. I'm gonna let you choose, Chris, whether we dive into the Marvel or the Star Wars first. We got Bad Batch finale. What if uh, premiere? I know you're going to be talking about what if on Monday on, on your show, but we can go, you know, I'm going to let you I choose. say I we, we start with Star Wars because I just finished it's that fresh. one. It's yeah. fresh in your mind. You got it's it. Fresh, it's fresh. Yeah. It's fresh meat. Exactly. It's fresh meat. Fresh meat. Okay. We're going to get, get into that. The Bad Batch. And um, there's some proper text to put at the bottom to go with what's happening at the moment on this 150th show. Okay, the bad bow. Oh, by the way, here's uh, before I forget for Chris. Thank you. you hey, uh, paid big money for the sound much. effects. I'm going to use them. Yeah, Actually, I paid, worth, absolutely. I paid very no money for those sounds. So, so you but, are getting your money's worth. So I am getting my money's worth, but I'm still going to use them. Okay, <laughs> bad batch uh, finale. Uh, first of all, here's my first thoughts. Um, and then I'd like to hear what you, what you're thinking on it. Um, I enjoyed the show overall, but I thought it ran a little bit too long for me. And I've, I've actually, since I, I, I kind of sat and meditated on the show a little bit after I watched it. And then a few days later, I started to read what other, other people, other people were saying about it. I thought 16 episodes was a little bit too much for me for this show. There was an area in the middle of the, the season that I thought kind of lagged. Um, I thought. I never felt that way with Mandalorian. I never felt that way with uh, any of the Marvel shows so far. In fact, I thought the Marvel shows, maybe some of them were the seasons were a little too short. I thought the Falcon winter soldier condensed way too much into a small um, mm. amount of episodes. It was like six episodes. I think uh, bad batch, 16 episodes. That's, that's a lot of episodes for 2021 television series. Okay. In my opinion, even for an animate, I'll give you a good example. Comparing it to the Masters of the Universe, Kevin Smith's Masters of the Universe on, on Netflix, I think that was six episodes for the first half of season one that they've already ran. That left me wanting more. Uh, it was tight. It was short, but it, it I never felt the lag in the middle of those mm -hmm. six episodes. In the 16 episodes, I thought there was a definite lag. The first part of the season for me starts off great. I'm really loving the, the first episode is as good as Star Wars as I've ever seen in the first episode. Uh, the first couple episodes, really good. I thought they had a strong ending. Those last two episodes, that was a two-parter, was uh, powerful, mighty, entertaining Star Wars. Okay, Again, there's that lag in the middle. And it, to me, it was more than just filler episode. Now, that's just me. I could be, you know, maybe I'm drunk. I don't know. Chris, uh, what do you think? And I, I enjoyed the characters too. I think these are great characters. Um, okay. So I kind of, I agree with you. There's, I don't know if it was too much or maybe the way they formatted it. Like I think you could have combined some episodes into one and just have them have a longer runtime. But I think this show was also kind of like, unsure whether it was being more for kids or more for adults because it was like there's yeah. some dark stuff in here but at the same time there's yeah. also some not you know it, it's tr it seems like it was trying to toe a line there mm -hmm. and like if, if there were some filler episodes where they're like we're mercenaries now we're going to do mercenary work and it doesn't further their story at all it just yeah. actually gets in the way of the story of the bad batch um so yeah you probably could have uh cut the season in in half almost and made it like 10 episodes and then you have some like maybe have 40 minute because i think they were around 30 minute so 
or just yeah, have like maybe. an hour long a couple at like because that first one was longer too and yeah I, it felt better than the other ones because the of like the other ones kind of got into that like the same feeling as the clone wars cartoon and yeah when it was like in it's the middle of it when they were just like making filler stuff mm -hmm. because there's some episodes that is just pure filler the same thing kind of mm -hmm. happened here and i think like you said it's for this day and age as it were that's kind of surprising you know you'd think they would go for maybe less episodes but more focused but i yeah. think they were also trying to like combine it and make it like a kid's and but i gotta say as far as the characters go i like most of the characters yeah um i think it's ridiculous though that omega has a stronger kiwi accent than anyone else like when she introduced herself to me, she's like, my name's Amiga. It's like, how did you get a heavier accent? Because accents is just something you, it's not, accents are genetic. You pick them up from listening to how people talk. How do you have the strongest one? And then they actually did say she was born first in that last episode. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I guess maybe the other ones, some of them was like got their accent from her, but. Oh man. I, yeah. At first I thought it was ridiculous, but then when I was like, well, she's the oldest. So now maybe that kind of does make sense, but it's like, how does she have the strongest accent out of anyone there? Um, there's a meme. There is other ways of introducing loyal soldiers of producing loyal soldiers. Yo dudes, the empire is pretty chill. <laughs> I'm trying to recruit new, new troops for the empire. Uh, the animation, by the way, uh, outstanding uh in this show and you're right you made a good point uh one of the, uh, about how they seem to struggle at times with this has got to be a, a little bit more of a kid show but then it's also pretty dark the story that that's being told and there seemed to be kind of a, a struggle between those two things i thought they struggled with that more in this show than even in the previous uh star wars animates uh like the clone wars where mm -hmm. i think uh and the clone wars too sometimes was there were there were points in Clone Wars where there were literal like seven minutes stretch where it just seemed like a kid show. Yeah. In an episode. Especially in the beginning, because yeah. they hadn't found their footing yet. And then they started to get more. And was, they were like, well, let's these people can handle star. You know, if you're watching this, even even kids can watch, you know, the original Star Wars and stuff like that, you know. You see a hand get cut off. Yeah. You know blasters make people die. It's okay. You get it. Yeah. But there's good guys and bad guys. And the thing is, with the clones and the droids, they even took it even farther out of it. It's not real people. It's droids and clones. Don't, you know, very rarely does a person die. The the And the way that they actually coolly worked into that was like, are clones people? And that became a big storyline for a lot of different things. And like, can yeah. they make their own decisions? Or are they just meat droids? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, and, and like I said, there was some great storytelling within this season. And um, oh, Debbie and, just made a great comment. Oh, let's see. I just saw her comment come up. Oh, uh, she said, I love the I loved I how the too. later shows started using music from OG movies. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that a lot. Like when they were and when they were landing on Camino and stuff, it was like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just like, I'm like, that was that brings me into it. I love hearing that. It makes you think about the Star Wars that you love and the yeah. movies and, and that music. And it really when that music came on, I was like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. That's I was totally on board with that. I love it when they bring it in, uh, even if they did a little bit more. I, I wish at times maybe they did a little bit more of that on Mandalorian, because when when uh, spoilers, mm. by the way, major spoilers. But the finale for Mandalorian, when Luke shows up. Uh, I would have loved a little maybe that was the only maybe only critique I could give for that finale was maybe it would have been kind of cool to have a little bit of that hint of that old old, old school Star Wars music mm -hmm. for Luke. Yeah. That's something I will say I really liked about Rebels, and I just recently watched that show all the way through because I was getting ready for yeah. Bad Batch. I hadn't watched it all the way through before because I was like, uh. And for that show, again, there's if they cut out the filler episodes from that and just focused on the stuff with like that impacted yeah. him as a Jedi and training, that is solid stuff. Every time that storyline comes up, every time they're that's like really good, interesting, and like th when they get to Vader and Ahsoka, I I was like, man. I really wish I'd given this a chance sooner, but then there's other things I didn't like about it. Like the straight up filler, like there's a yeah. lot and I don't like that, 
But like Debbie was saying, the music on that when they were getting in like when they go into and get in a space fight and i just hear the um music from like the asteroid field yeah. when they're getting chased by a top and it's like da, 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 and da, 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 oh and it's, it's just like uh, adds a whole nother level to enjoying the experience it's like yes perfect this is the music that i would expect mm -hmm. to hear because this is star wars and we're in a space <laughs> fight do you think they stick with the 16 episode? I assume they'll stick with the 16 episode format though going forward. Probably. I don't think I know, but yeah. I think I've seen some other people making the complaint that it was, you know, about the filler yeah. episodes kind of. Yeah. But I think it's something that they can get away with. They might go with fewer episodes. I mean, how many episodes was the last season of the Clone Wars? Yeah, I, I need like to go back 12. and check, but it was it was less. It was more. I think, and that's what I think. I think twelve would be perfect. Uh, I feel this is a twelve episode, and make it a more, more focused story. Like if they had cut out the mercenary stuff, and you yeah. could have, you could have yeah. cut out at least a lot of that because there were whole episodes where it's like, go do this task. Okay, good job doing mm -hmm. that task. And it's like, wow, what? <laughs> I heard a theory early in the season that I loved, but now it's not possible because I think they had they had released a book that gave the origin story of captain phasma, but that Omega was captain phasma. That was a theory that I saw bounced around uh, months that ago. That would suck for her. <laughs> that would suck for her. But I thought at the first I was like, Oh, that's kind of sad, depressing outcome for Omega. But then at the same time, uh, that's kind of interesting storytelling. Like, cause you want to know, cause then you get the fans in really invested in Omega wanting to know how Omega got from where she's at now to that point of being Captain Phasma and what led to that. I, st I did see the getting was... owned by Finn and like, Oh twist. gosh. Yeah. That's the worst of it. Yeah. That's the, that's that's the, the thing it. about connecting things to the sequels is that then they're connected to the sequels and it's you mostly tragic. Like oh, Luke Skywalker at the end of the turn of the Jedi. This is amazing. Yeah. Last Jedi. Oh my God, no! It, you know that's why I'm just like I, I just stop with Re Return of the Jedi and then Mandalorian, um, which is cool. That is continuing that story in a way that I'm interested in, and people can scoff at me and say they're clearly setting up the sequels. I'm like, there are parts that might they might be trying to connect to that, but it doesn't have to. And so far, it hasn't directly. And so I'm until the, the only thing they really did it with they hinted at it with the cloning stuff, but there's been tons of cloning in Star Wars. We're just talking about the Bad Batch, after all. Um, so there's been tons of cleaning. And then when Baby Yoda Force healed, and I was like, well, that's just them trading in on the popularity of the Mandalorian to try and save what's going to happen. Because like a week later, the Rise of Skywalker came out, and she was just like, Force heal, Force heal. And it's just like, oh, well, if a baby can do it, and if you like him, then you can't be mad at her. And it's like, yes, I can. <laughs> This one here from Facebook user, Star Wars, Stephen Presley. Limited choice of words is great. Love your show, bro. There. I'm, I'm, interp I'm interpreting. Is that, what does that mean? Facebook user. Facebook user. I think I know uh -huh. who that is. They comment on the shows all the time, and they're awesome. They're a great watcher. <laughs> of, and thank you, watcher, for watching. Um, Facebook watcher. <laughs> Facebook watcher. You're yeah, well, you know, actually, maybe it is actually just a watcher. And it's like, what if today on what if we're watching Thunder Pop? <laughs> oh, we're gonna get into what if here in a second. Later. Yeah, well, that's, that's the what if. That, I just saw him. Yeah, I thought of it. So that's the what if. No, we'll no, I got something. I got something uh, that when you that you brought up about what if that it want to hit because it's really, I think it's cool. Uh, before we get in what if, I've got a Thunder Take. That we were going to open the show with it, but I got so excited talking about Bad Batch that I just dove right in. But it's appropriate that the Thunder Take is also Star Wars centric. Now, have you caught wind of the uh, the announcements that came recently for the new Star Wars hotel? Uh, no, I haven't been tracking that because it's out of my price range. So, oh gosh, <laughs> just been ignoring it. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's a mortgage. It's a mortgage to go to Star Wars uh, new um, hotel that when it finally yeah. opens, forty eight hundred dollars for a two night stay, I believe, is what I I read. 
just the other day. And you really literally have to be George Lucas to be able to afford, <laughs> afford to stay at this hotel. It's the star Wars galactic star cruiser. And I, this, this place is going to be so expensive. I mean, you're going to try to you see these people back here following Chewbacca around. Chewbacca is <laughs> going to be like, get the fuck off of me unless you're going to give me some money. Cause oh there's no, nothing's nothing's for free here. Even hanging out with, with a Wookiee is an extra fee. So yeah, he's going to growl at him and tell him to get the fuck back. Oh, by the way too, uh, you know, when Disney acquired star Wars, a lot of people thought maybe that was the first partnership between Disney and star Wars, but going back as far as the eighties, there was a star Wars Disney connection because in the 1980s, George Lucas um, collaborated with Michael Jackson and made basically Star Wars, but with a different name that was shown at or uh, in Orlando's um, Epcot Disney Parks. It was the Captain EO movie. There's a hmm. picture from Captain EO. You can actually find. So they used to charge people. I don't know, whatever. At the time, <laughs> it was like a big deal to buy a ticket and go to Captain EO at Disney at Epcot. And people paid at the time what seemed like probably a lot of money to go see it. And it was so exclusive. And now it shows you how things changed. We're like, what? It's been since that happened, that happened back in the, I think, 87, 86 ish. And now we're looking, it's been over three decades since that was out and it was a big deal. But now you can find that ready old movie on YouTube. <laughs> And it's like no big deal. You can just find it and watch it on your phone where 30 years ago it was exclusive and it was like a premium experience to go to Disney. And I wonder if the hotel is going to end up being that because right now in the opening of it, it's just basically for like it's the elite that are going to be are people that are willing to take out a mortgage yeah. uh, a loan to get to go there for forty four eight hundred dollars for two nights. I'm going to sneak in. I'm going to be like the code breaker in 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 the last Jedi. See, Hacker. it'll be perfect. I'll even cosplay like the like the uh like Benicio del Toro's character. The uh the, the, the don't kick me out. Yeah, and I'll stutter when they try to throw me out. It'll be a whole bit. They're just gonna put you to work. <laughs> you do a good enough cosplay. I'll come in and just do a really good cosplay of that character and say, Well, I'm I'm the uh code breaker. I'm, 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 so I think Yeah, and you're it. supposed to be serving space enchiladas on deck nine. Get to work. <laughs> i'll be i'll be back okay just <laughs> anyway is this going to be the same thing 30 years from now is this going to be a dump and it's going to be cheap to go i mean what's going to happen um i guess it, uh, i have no idea it's obviously it's a different thing because it's a like a getaway oh, by the way by the way you're at the dude version of the show now you're, you're now your title is dude sweet You've got your uh, own back to dude. Dope. I think if they can keep the experience um like amazing, if they can make it worth it for these people to pay that much and they keep getting business, like there are resorts that people go to that cost more than that. Uh rich people, you know, but mm -hmm. it just depends on if they can get the customers for it. If they can't, they're gonna have to they're going to by definition have to lower the price, but then you get a a low, as it's always sunny in philadelphia would say like a lower class of people uh starting to come in and if they wreck up the place and don't appreciate it then <laughs> but it's it's uh it'll be interesting to see if they can if it's that i don't know how booked is it is it like pre-booked or people like i haven't checked into that yet to see if people yeah. have already they've already started i this. me neither i've been trying to ignore it as much as possible because i saw the initial price and i was just like just don't pay attention to this because it's probably going to be awesome. And then you're going to want to do it and you, you, you just can't. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. It. I have Captain EO on Plex. I watched <laughs> it at Disneyland Paris years ago. Oh, I didn't even know they had it at Disneyland Paris as well. I know I've, I've seen it. I like it. I love it. It's, it's really, it's George Lucas in Michael Jackson doing a, basically what's a star Wars movie, but with Michael Jackson dancing and singing, it was, it was great. But I, I didn't get to go see it when it first came out into Disneyland. I I watched it on YouTube like years later. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a big deal. Uh, Eskel, how much did it cost back then? Was it expensive to go see Captain EO? I believe it was like for the 80s. 
Was it was it kind of was it a costly thing? Uh, Debbie says uh, it's sad. The average person won't be able to enjoy the experience. I know, but unless you have the code breaker to get you to break you in, <laughs> sneak into that place, there'll be some people trying to pull some shenanigans though, like paying like 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 twenty people trying to sneak in and stay in the same room together. <laughs> I mean, I mean they'll try to police some of those shenanigans, but there'll be and some. If they if they pull all the money together, then it's like all right. <laughs> 10 of us to a room. He said, I have no idea. It was so long ago. It was a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. France. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. The, so it was Disney trying to make a splash back with Star Wars kind of centric things back in the 80s with Captain EO. And then now they own Star Wars. So of course they could do whatever they oh, want yeah. with Star Wars. If they do it, anything you want. Now I have, I do know one guy, uh, rest in peace. The late Johnny Lightfoot, uh, who was a contributor to our show, uh, was the only person I know that went to Galaxy's Edge, that to actual Galaxy's Edge. He went before, like, like literally a month before the pandemic, hmm. and he he did the custom lightsaber. We build a custom lightsaber, and he brought it into the studio. And it was when we were still doing people in person. People were coming in in person to the studio before COVID, and he had light. It was cool. He had the lightsaber, and he was showing it off. He let me hold it. And I was How so was it? like, it was so cool. So anyway, he had a blast, but that was pre pandemic. And just recently they started, they started, they kind of opened back up again at uh, galaxy's edge where people were coming in and stuff. But yeah, it is a shame that the hotel experience is going to be so exclusive. Um, I mean, that's more expensive. I mean, I think you go travel, you go to Europe, probably take a trip to Europe for less than that. I don't know, actually. Maybe exaggerating. Depends. Well, you could, I mean, you probably could, yeah. You could take the low rate airline, like the Spirit Airline, okay, where, they're, yeah. uh, where they're like real mean to you, and you sit like on a on a rock or something, or like a like a fold out chair with yeah, no four thousand dollars. Yes, you could you could have some sort of experience in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a uh, it's Stay Spirit Airlines. Save your money. Hostel Spirit Airlines. Uh, you'll get robbed a couple of times. Uh, smuggle something for the mob then you'll make money true true come out come out on top <laughs> true it's, it's 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 very true um all right we're gonna get into what if now and you you were doing the kind of the introduction of what if and i thought about that because that's one of my favorite parts of the show i love that introduction and i love uh the guy from saturday night live that's that do that's doing the the he's the what does he call himself all the, the one that sees all in the universe the watcher the watcher yeah the watcher <laughs> i love that the voice peeping tom the peeping tom of the universe he's got the greatest <laughs> gig ever for a nosy person in this multiverse that's it that's it. have you done a parody with that yet have you done anything with that yet or are you you're kicking something around i you should do a actually parody. the only thing i've done with it so far is i for the new mcu mondays opener i used clips from the first episode of what if and that opening sequence with the shards and everything yeah i put that in my countdown and then i put like uh peggy carter knocking people out in the actual theme song behind like the marvel it's pretty cool um <laughs> i'm gonna be doing that from now on with every episode i'm gonna try and like customize it with uh scenes from yeah yeah I, I, love I love it i would love to do a fan fiction what if episode for if there was any, oh, any yeah. characters or show that's one that gives you just an endless canvas to you do whatever with. you want yeah you, yeah you can do whatever you want you could just come up with some ridiculous shit for a what if episode because it's 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 infinite i mean I, you have you have you fantasized of any scenarios you would have wanted to see as a one if what if episode well there's definitely a, what if episodes that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Like I don't even need to like, and the ones so far have been pretty good. Yeah. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to where they get to like Dr. Strange. Loki yeah. should also be interesting, but Dr. Strange, I can't wait to see what's going on there. Cause I know that there are multiple Dr. Strange. This could act that, that episode could actually progress. And of course, I mean, Tony Stark's going to be fun, but Tony Stark should be a fun one. Uh, not voiced by Robert Downey Jr., but sure sounds a hell, hell, hell of hell. Sure sounds a lot like him. <laughs> I couldn't get that out. Uh, and 
they've got yeah some of the people like Haley atwell played her character or played yeah. peggy uh yeah. but sebastian stan did the bucky and then but when you got into you know drax and, and i don't think that was michael rooker playing um yondu i couldn't tell though yeah definitely uh, uh very memorable uh chadwick boseman uh coming was his last acting role of his life was voice coming back to voice the what if for uh t'challa t'challa star lord t'challa uh, star lord and debbie said yes it was so i'm guessing that's in response to yondu mm -hmm. um but i know drax wasn't um voiced by batista oh because uh, there was a whole was it was that Twitter when he was mad about it? Was that what's yeah. that? Yeah, because there's Twitter. Mad? Someone asked him on Twitter, he's like, why didn't you do the voice for a drag? And he's like, no one <laughs> approached me for that to do it. That's weird. Was that because of the James Gunn thing you saw? Well, I think I think it could be because they don't want to spend money if they don't have to. Like that's why yeah. Robert Downey Jr. isn't gonna be doing Tony Stark. Uh Chris Evans didn't do Captain America. Uh, yeah, you know, they're not going to get every single big name actor to come back and do, that would make this cost more money than it's worth. Do you think they went in and they decided they tr they tried out some uh, lesser uh, like lower costing cost voiceover actors and the ones that they could find that a voice outside of the actual original person, they went with it and then they used what budget they had to spend money? where they needed to, where they couldn't get a voice that yeah. duplicated. You think it was that easy? That was simply just that? Well, not in every case, but no, I well, think no. for, like, for, a, in yeah. a, for the most part. Yeah. Like who can like, and, and for, for especially like, if we see Thor, like, do you really, like, it's probably not going to be Chris Hemsworth. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. The, and the only reason that the, Chadwick Boseman did this one is because, you know, they knew he was dying and, if if yeah and i mean his was a popular character that hadn't quite i know he's not like one of the big three back there but yeah he still would have you know under normal circumstances would have cost them a lot of money would they have rather have not done that maybe right Who's but, to say? it depends on like the whole budget of the show when they're budgeting out like how much is animation going to cost us how right. much is like everything else costing us then how much room do we have left for the actors and then it's you know what did josh brolin play um thanos thanos i don't think so by the way i love um, that Th i love the thanos stuff in the second episode the, the i thought the, it was just... funny but it was kind of crazy because he was like he gave up on his idea just because someone presented a good enough argument and i was just like oh <laughs> i guess it's a different well, universe it's a different you know Thanos yeah. or whatever and i was like that's i guess he does keep talking about it to people though and they're like that's genocide <laughs> it's he's still it's still kind of there like the the bucket list the, the one thing the stone unturned man i never got around to doing that genocide thing i okay, was well, i was i was working on Debbie's saying that it will be Hemsworth and Josh Brolin was Thanos. So I Josh don't know. was Thanos. Oh, okay. She says it was him. So they did get Hemsworth. Well, um, then I don't know why they didn't get Batista, but or Chris Evans. So like I don't know what the I don't know why they decide to go with who they decide to go with, except they, in the they, case of Chadwick Boseman. They don't have Chris Evans, right? That was for sure. That wasn't no, somebody else voiced. I th I think it was contractual on some of it. Like Chris Evans' contract was probably up before they did that uh, what if episode, and they probably was going to be cost them more money to bring in an actor that was not in con under contract. That's what I'm guessing, without knowing and doing more research. Yeah. Um, and Chadwick, I know he insisted on doing it because he wanted as much of an opportunity as possible to to present that character himself to the audience mm -hmm. you know uh so i know and also i think like you said they probably knew he was dying and they really wanted they, they knew did. it was going to be very important if they had used a different actor to do that voice and then they they probably wouldn't even have been able to use it because people would have been so upset if they had had, had another actor do that mm -hmm. they wouldn't have still used... turmoil over how they're gonna replace him or 
you know, not replace him because they're not like recast. You know what I mean? Like they're not just uh, recasting that role to someone else. You know, they're going to make it so like in the MCU, he died. I'm pretty sure. Well, I think that's what they're saying. I would, I would go, I w- I'll tell you what, I would stall for a while on it. And I would well, make they got the, the Black Panther show coming out. Um, I would go prequel. For, I would go prequel for Black Panther too. I would make it a prequel. Oh no um, way! I would make it a prequel because that way it gives you. And but but I'm talking about like way back to like his dad, his dad's reign as king, and make the story about him. And that's what I would have done with Black Panther too, because that gives you an out to where you don't have to address some of these complicated things right now. It mm-hmm. gives you an out. And then by the time you do the, the third film, then you could come back to it. You, They've can got, still do it. you can still do a tribute within this movie. They, will, they might have too many other things going within like the MCU for them to be taking a look. Let's take a look at Wakanda years ago. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like well, they're the trying other- to progress the story at this point. Like but that was one of the complaints about Black Widow was that this doesn't really matter. You know, like. it's, it's one of the most it really is one of the most challenging um things to deal with. They are doing a prequel. <laughs> What's that? That's what Wakanda Forever is what is the TV show, one of the TV shows they're gonna have. Um oh wait, he says yeah, yeah not, he says they are doing a prequel. I don't know. I hadn't they are doing that. a prequel for the second movie well there's rumor that. there's been rumors of it i mean is it has it been confirmed that they're going to go the prequel route what i do know is i've i've read that they've had multiple re and and coogler ryan coogler has confirmed they've had multiple rewrites uh for this movie which indicates to me they're having as hard a time as we are speculating on what they're going to do they've had as hard a time themselves actually deciding what they were going to do uh, now i did get a, another tip me and my tips, but I got another tip that they were casting uh, young kids to be Wakandan warriors. And you remember the end of the, the first film uh, the, the with uh, Bucky, uh, White mm-hmm. Wolf, and those kids come in to get them. Uh, there were, so there was a little bit of an early um, viewing of the kid warriors. Apparently, they're, they're casting a bunch of those kid warriors for this movie. So I thought, well, another, op- another possibility is they could do a skip ahead of several years and they could use the snap and you have T'Challa has a son. T'Challa's son is, is now the central central focus of black Panther. And I know there's all these other people say, okay, sure. He's going to be the black Panther. That's very possible. Uh, I mean, there was Vegas odds on who was going to be the next black Panther. And I think that I'm sure uh, he has been in the comics. Yeah. Sure. He's been, been black Panther before. Um, and I know, um, you know, there's other, there's been some other ideas out there too bounced around. So I don't know. A lot. Well, there's been a lot of ideas bounced around. The internet is full of ideas. And, and yeah, thoughts. I just saw something that said um, Ironheart is going to be introduced in that. Yeah. In Wakanda Forever. Yes. And I that hadn't heard announced. that it was. Yeah. Yeah. So I hadn't heard that it was going to be a prequel. I don't. I have well, not they, seen that. No. Well, here's what we do know. They casted. For the because they're going to do the Atlantis and they cast it was in Namor, Namor, the villain, Namor, I don't Namor. Know. Namor, who is basically the uh-huh. MCU's version of Aquaman. Um, only he works more in the gray area than Aquaman does in the DC world. Uh, that they casted the guy from Narcos to be Namor. That's that's been confirmed. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think what's been confirmed is that he was cast. And then it was also confirmed that they were going. It's the movie is going to focus on their battle, Wakanda's battle with Atlantis. So everybody just put it together, pieced it together that he, oh, he's Namor, uh, he's perfect for that that character, um, visually. Um, but anyway, uh, he said, "I want Weasel to be the next Black Panther." Um, and he said that was talked about a year ago. I'm assuming he's talking about with the uh, the prequel idea. And he said, just make it happen, DC. That's cool. I don't know. Okay, so the what ifs, uh, you said the Doctor Strange one's one you're looking forward to the most coming up. Yeah, because that one, I'm thinking that could actually ha- ha- like affect the MCU. Now, yeah. like I know all these things are like canon because it's a multiverse and anything can right. happen. I get, I get that. 
but there's still like a prime timeline where most of our heroes exist essentially yeah i believe you know or, or like i don't after loki who knows but like wherever loki is whatever's going to happen in doctor strange the the movie is probably going to tell us a lot more about settling that like what timeline are we in and blah 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 what multiversal war are we fighting uh because it's multiverse of madness so i assume a lot of questions are gonna be answered there i'm thinking in his what if though since you know he's gonna be dealing with the multiverse of madness and we've seen in the trailers there's multiple doctor strange's interaction maybe one of the doctor strange is actually one of the ones from the prime timeline like the actual mcu oh the zombies yeah We're and the getting... zombies are gonna be great we're gonna get. I, a I, I assume that's gonna be in a different episode, but I can't wait to see what what they're doing with that Marvel zombies. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be a zombie episode. Uh, here's a little uh, meme from earlier. Um, it says, "Give a group some representation in 2018 and 2019 team up movie that shakes the nation in the next year." Okay, I've got I got to move this insect themed film. Yeah, then insect theme film here it is insect theme film for life. let me read again it rhymes it's kind of a, a poem give a group give a group representation team up movie that shakes the nation an insect theme film for relaxation <laughs> and there you go and that was that's what they were calling ant-man and the wasp and spider-man far from home as the the relaxation movies so uh here's the oh this was my favorite meme Fifth from Lord. the first week episode and anybody that has no wonder they paid... call her peggy <laughs> hey -o. but i'm pump hey -o. where's that rim shot give me that rim shot okay i'll give you a, i'll give you laughter instead <laughs> there you go yes and what's the deal i mean look at this i mean there's so many questions i have here I want to see the before they edited this post the the uh, Photoshop. Here's the thing: in actuality, she'd be like, "I like it better when you're in your machine." <laughs> That's true. Use that the Hydra be... stopper. <laughs> oh man, that thing's oh. indestructible. Good because she would wreck your little asthmatic ass, Steve. You're a tiny concave chested man. Only made to look even smaller once she gets even bigger. Oh my gosh. She was strong too. Oh gosh. Yes. Captain Carter. She was uh there like she lifting is. trucks. Well not well lifting them. She threw that motorcycle crazily though. And I noticed Captain America threw a motorcycle in Age of Ultron, but she got it lift. Well, she kind of rode it, I guess, and shoved it. I don't know. And then she when she charged through the sandbags though. I was like, whoa. Oh gosh. That you know, I that episode to me like could have been <laughs> they could have done a movie out of that episode, I think. Like they well, would have been the thing. it would it would have done and that's why the other thing about these what if things is they're really fast paced because yeah. they're expecting you to already have know the movie that they're referencing. Yeah. Like yeah. the first movie was Captain America, the first Avenger. And then did it play out beat for beat? No, but you saw where the similarities and where the differences were. You could recognize that. And if you didn't know the background, you'd still get an entertaining cartoon. You might not have gotten any of the references, but you're like, well, this was an entertaining 30-ish minute cartoon. Okay. Uh, but if you did understand where the things were different, where they were the same, yeah. you're like, oh, dude, the train. This is where Bucky becomes Winter Soldier. And then it's like, oh, shoot, no, Steve's the one falling. Is Steve going to be a Winter Soldier? Oh man, the Red Skull's got the Tesseract. What's he's gonna make his weapons? Out? Oh no, he's summoning Cthulhu mm -hmm. instead. Like that was crazy. And then he's and then it's funny because he still ends up being destroyed by the thing he summoned. Just like in the original, he's like destroyed by the Tesseract. So it's it's great to see the parallels, but it also makes them move things along much faster. Like the the Star Lord one especially. That one's based on Guardians of the Galaxy, but the only real parts of Guardians of the Galaxy they have in there are um, the beginning when there's an abduction, except it's T'Challa, and then it's like the end or the clot. Well, the part where they can meet the collector, except the collector is like a big bad now because yeah, things change because of differences. Yeah, um, yeah I mean Thanos. And then is they a, Thanos yeah. is a good guy, but also interestingly enough, at the end of that one. 
they released that hyper growing plant that they were after yeah. yeah into the nowhere skull and that's the decapitated skull of a celestial and so yeah. who knows what that could do maybe that could bring it back to life in this universe or whatever mm -hmm. and what would celestials are kind of a big deal because i mean first of all they're literally huge they're a big physical they're giants but also they destroy planets and whatnot i got a another martin this is kind of spilling into just marvel talk in general and they just also showed sorry celestials in um the eternals second trailer so yeah they're kind of setting some stuff it's, they're setting that up like it's coming in uh i read today i read or yesterday and now shang chi is coming out and they're releasing it differently then it's a busy stretch right now. We're about to have because we got what if that just started. Then we're gonna that's gonna spill into Shang Chi that's coming up. The Hawkeye uh, show, which will premiere this fall, mm. um, and then we'll see about No Way Home. Um, no Way Home. Good God, that's gonna be depressing if they push that back. But it's gonna really depend on what Shang Chi does. Hoping gonna, we'll get that Spider Man trailer then. That's what uh, that's what I'm hearing. That's what. That's what I'm hearing now. Okay. So Shang-Chi. Now we know black widow. Of course they did. They, they were still trying to do the simultaneous simultaneously release it streaming while it's in theaters. They, that has not worked well for them. That's, that's well, cool. they started getting sued. <laughs> now I don't know if the <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shang-Chi thing is, uh, because of that specifically, or just because right. the, but Either way, probably until that case is settled, they're not going to do that again or not. No. They don't want to be on rocky ground like that again. So they're like, okay, <clears throat> just theaters. Well, and how could you also try and get people to go to theaters? I mean, back in the day, you know, when the prequels were coming out, the Star Wars prequels, they put a trailer for the new Star Wars movie in front of a different movie and everyone would buy tickets to see that movie to see the trailer and then leave and not even watch the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So like people will, you know, like to see trailers at movies if you're, that's part of the experience. And so dropping a new trailer at a movie is still something I think you could get to draw people in and they might. And if people here now, I mean, it's going to be on the internet so soon after it goes in theaters, that's just the way things are these days, but yeah, it might still entice people to go see Shang-Chi to see it on the big screen or, you know, well, and shang Chi's getting some great buzz. I mean, I've heard already from people that then that haven't been able to give official reviews yet. I think there's still an embargo, but the people that saw the premiere, of course, we hear hype all the time, but they're saying That's some not. tremendously great things about this movie. Um, so it could be now they won't have the option to watch it for 45 days on streaming. So this is yet again, another experiment. Does this fix the problem with the theatrical release not doing so well after the second week uh, by not putting it on streaming at all until 45 days from now. And well, then here's the thing you met, you brought up a good point about the trailer. If Spider-Man trailer, no way home is in, indeed going to be at the, uh, the front of this movie. They should absolutely promote that because that will also help ticket sales. How many more people will get excited about going? Uh, I'm excited for Shang-Chi. A lot of people are excited for Shang-Chi, but then there's also an audience of people that would go that wouldn't necessarily have gone. They would have just waited the 45 days for Disney plus. But now if you tell them that they can get that trailer, hold on now I'm going, I'm going to go see this no way home trailer. I mean, do you, do you think they should promote that? Um, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, it, it would, I don't know if you need to promote it. Like, I think you're going to have like the opening weekend is going to be big for almost any Marvel movie, you know? That's the thing yeah. with Black Widow, yeah. though. Black was Widow like, did fine the first weekend. Well, the thing is, people see it w then. And so when there was a drop off, it's like, it's not like Black Widow's a movie where you're like, I got to go see that movie again. You know, it just wasn't that kind of movie. So you're yeah. everyone, and yeah. it had been, it was already coming out too late before it got delayed. Then it got delayed. And so yeah. anyone who was chomping at the bit to see this movie saw it. And that's it. Mm -hmm. It's not surprising that there was a huge drop off. Now, without Disney Plus at all, you might see less of a drop off. But the only way to tell if this movie would actually do better than Black Widow in that circumstance would be to release them at the release the on Disney Plus and in theaters at the same time and see how it does. But they're not yeah. going to do that. So, uh, Tester said, "I think Doctor Strange is going to reset everything." 
a complete reboot. Now that Venom 2 is also in the MCU somewhat, it will be wild. It, it definitely will be wild. That we know for a fact. Everything going forward in this phase is going to be pretty wild. Uh, even the Ant-Man movie is going to be pretty wild. Quantum Mania. Be... That was their first. They said that's the first time you're going to see Kang. Right. As yeah. actual Kang. Because everyone's yeah. like, we saw him in Loki. It's like, no, that was a variant. So we're going to yeah. see, apparently, unless they twisted that up somehow. But Right. If it's a That's trick. what he was cast for. So we should be. And Quantum Mania. I mean, whew. With all the stuff with the um, Loki and the the Time Variance Authority and how the quantum uh, realm has time works differently, and Owen Wilson literally said time works differently here, so they're possibly in the quantum realm. We know Ant Man's been experimenting with the quantum realm, and they're going to meet Kang. I think that's all going to be coming together there. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's pretty exciting stuff uh, going forward. Either way. Another thing that Shang-Chi has going, you, you brought this up as well with Black Widow, how Black Widow had been delayed for so long and that might take away a little bit of the bite in terms, in terms of a, the buzz for a movie and that could have also affected it in the mm -hmm. end. But with Shang-Chi, not a delayed movie, correct? It's coming out when it was originally announced to come out from the, from the get-go? If it has been delayed, it wasn't delayed much. I'm not sure on that i'd have to <laughs> but definitely not delayed in the same way that black widow was no, delayed, where it was literally no. delayed at what a year almost a year and a half yeah from its original release date because it was it had the unfortunate it and also um a quiet place were movies that were literally supposed to come out like right as the pandemic was starting like, they were like literally week, days away from coming out and then boom psych psych dune Ah, oh, Dune. Ah, oh, yeah. Dune. Well, Dune, Dune is one of the, the one movie, and now Shang Chi uh, for me. But Dune is one movie that I cannot watch on a small screen. And even oh, yeah. the director recently said it's silly to watch Dune on a small screen. I would totally agree with that. Yeah, uh, no, I will you go to I a mean, movie have, theater for that. I mean, you I'll just look at the previews suit. and look at the epic scale of the things on display. You want to see that? Ah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and it's going to be a trilogy. It's supposed to be a trilogy. They're making. They're hoping it's going to be a trilogy. They're, they're planning it as a trilogy. Well, yeah, they said the the first movie only covers the first half of the first yeah. book. Yeah, so which is good. That's it's fine. I mean, Unless I have you're... a friend. I have a friend that owns a hazmat suit. I'll borrow that hazmat suit and I'll go mm -hmm. to the. If I have to wear a hazmat suit, I'm going to wear it to see Dune in the theater. Uh, it's around my birthday. I'll, I'll do a private theater rent rental, whatever. I'm going to see Dune on the big screen. Right on. Uh, and, and I'm going to be the, uh, uh, the code breaker to go to the star Wars hotel. <laughs> it's, it's already on my bucket list. Cosplaying that. Uh, okay. We got some agree or disagree for YouTube sensation. Chris Cassidy. We got some, and how's the show? How's the show been for you? Is it feeling you you're oh. feeling the you've been feeling the electricity? Fantastic, man. <laughs> my, my is my prep been paying off to for the show? Uh yeah, I I've been I kind of worked been... on it. I, I didn't want to mess things. I didn't want to have to come later and apologize. Sorry, sir. Doing my best. How many assholes <laughs> are there on this show? <laughs> yes. Oh man. Oh boy. Okay, agree or disagree. For Chris Cassidy on this 150th show, I got number one for you. Okay, we were talking about uh, Chadwick Boseman and in Marvel and what voiceover, what original actors were they able to get, or they did they get, and then which ones did they not get? They of course had Chadwick Boseman, they had Sebastian Stan, and then there, there was no Robert Downey Jr. and there's uh, no uh, other Drax was mentioned. So now we recently. Uh, this just came out a few days ago. There, there's a Val Kilmer documentary on Prime. And also, Val Kilmer's been in the news a lot lately because of that documentary. But because of his throat cancer, he has not been able to talk the same way for quite a while. He was part of a new, um, I guess it's a new thing they're testing out, an AI voice recreates a voice. Uh, and by using some of his dialogue from some of his movies, some audio from some of his movies and past past interviews they were able to create a program that can simulate or recreate his voice through ai 
So then whatever he dictates and wants to say to the public can actually be said in his voice. Okay, here's a clip. We all have the capacity to be creative. We're all driven to share our deepest dreams and ideas with the world. When we think of the most talented creative people, they speak to us in a unique way. A phrase we often hear is, having a creative voice. But I was struck by throat cancer. After getting treated, my voice as I knew it was taken away from me. People around me struggle to understand me when I'm talking. But despite all that, I still feel I'm the exact same person. Still the same creative soul. The soul that dreams ideas and stories constantly. But now I can express myself again. I can bring these dreams to you and show you this part of myself once more. A part that was never truly gone. Just hiding away. Okay, and that's the company there that has created this program. Do you agree or disagree? This is neat. This is kind of cool. I, I mean, I love new tech, but also do you agree or disagree? This could be the beginning of the end for live people being paid to voice characters in or to narrate for voiceover talent. Is this the beginning of the end now that they can with AI create a, uh, something that sounds so, so real? Well, I mean, possibly, but it all still had to be, like someone still had to say the words. I guess if you could just create the voice of anyone, then you could have anyone uh, tell it what to say. But if they're going to do stuff like that, like when you start cutting humans out of the equation too much, what do you even have? Like the show by robots. It might be a show by robots for robots. I don't know what the future is. I was going to say like four, four robots, like, now there are no more people. And if there are any more people and there's just robots, I don't think there would be shows. <laughs> no, the robots that's don't, kind of pointless. You know, they don't need entertainment. Inter yeah. They know? don't, they just entertain themselves in their head. And, and uh, if I've Debbie, learned anything from Futurama, the only entertainment they need is to kill all humans. Or there's the merge with machines, the cyborgs depends on what, which yeah, way kill all them too. <laughs> it's an infection. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Cause that's actually like the future of humanity is, you know, we're already doing it like artificial hearts and all different kinds of, you know, that's happening yeah. already. Well, Pristine yeah. I mean, and things. Uh, robot Tesla, arms and Tesla guy, Tesla guy here. Now he's here in Austin has that chip he's working on that would uh, be able to help people with, with a uh, dementia, you know, mm. and it's what you, once you start talking about putting chips in brains to improve uh, people's memories or dementia, that's where it starts. But where does that end up later? Mind control yeah. chip. What's that? Mind control chip. A mind control chip. And we've all seen that movie. We know uh, a, a wealthy, elite billionaire, zillionaire coming up with new tech. It's intended to be for good in the beginning. But where does it always go? It always goes wrong. Uh, Debbie said, I thought his son, uh, Val, Val's son, sounded a lot like him in the documentary. Yeah, in the actual Prime uh, video documentary, uh, in the Prime Video documentary, uh, Val's son, who sounds also a lot like Val Kilmer, did the narration for the documentary in 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 place of his dad. But now they won't even need his son because of what they're able to do with this, this software program. Okay, number two on Agree or Disagree, Chris Cassidy. Uh, number two, Sly Stallone, who voiced the um, King Shark in um, Suicide Squad. He um, was a big hit with fans. And now he has a number one, because of Suicide Squad, he is the only actor of any error 
that can take claim on having a number one movie in six consecutive decades. 70s, the 80s, the 90s. And I had to sit down and do the math here to figure this out. But the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the the, 2000, the 2Ks, the 2010s, and now, because of Suicide Squad, the 2020s would be the sixth decade he's had a number one movie. Now, granted, he didn't have a large amount of movies coming out after, say, 2000, uh, 2004. There was a drought. Like, I think around 2005, a lot of the stuff he was putting out was like straight to video. And then he did, then he had his big comeback because he started doing Rocky movies again. They did Creed, they did The Expendables. So, and then a few more stinkers in between all those. But um, he's had one movie now, Suicide, thanks to James Gunn and that first week's success. He's had a movie, six, six, he's had a number one movie in six decades. But here's my question for you Do you think. This is the last time that will ever happen. And the reason why I bring this up, we were talking about Michael Jackson earlier. Michael Jackson has the, I think the, still has the number one selling album of all time, Thriller. And, and no one has ever surpassed that. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's impossible to, to do that anymore because a lot of people don't buy album. They don't buy CDs. They don't buy records. When a new, when a new, when a band that you like comes out, people will download it or they'll listen to it on whatever app that they're using, but they're not buying hard media like they were, you know, years ago. So for that reason, nobody, no one, nobody may ever, no one may ever surpass an album sales. Well, now with movies and theatrical releases, the future of that may be in doubt. A lot of people going to streaming. Could that be happening with Sylvester Stallone? That, that may never happen again. Do you agree or disagree with that? <laughs> um, I have to see if anyone else was close, but it's definitely going to be... The thing with movies, it's slightly different, though, because, I mean, if they, do they will they count, like, streaming numbers? What, what will count as number one, like, just to get to... Yeah get to a place where, and since they release like on different timed weekends for the most part to give yeah. them the best chance i think there's still a possibility um that someone could do this but you i think you made a good point that it's being less and less likely as time goes on i mean there's new there's new like successes that can be had in new media like now um artist it's a big deal if you have a number one, uh, if you have a number one app, like a lot of artists mm. come out with their own apps If their apps are being downloaded more mm. than any, any other artist. Uh, Instagram uh, in how many followers you have on Instagram has become a new form of currency that artists are judged by uh, how many downloads, how many listens you get on Spotify is a new metrics of success for musical artists. And then for actors that now it's, streaming and it's theatrical and it's television but you know certainly um how many eyeballs are on tom hanks movies that are going straight to apple tv mm -hmm. so and that's a new metrics that's a new level of failure or success um it's a little bit more still kind of mysterious uh i would say right now the king of uh netflix is probably adam sandler <laughs> of netflix yeah he made a good deal there and they made a good deal on him because he makes fun movies for the most part like yeah. they're entertaining i enjoy them i enjoy most of his movies even i've seen some some of the new ones on netflix and i was like this is an adam sandler movie yeah exactly mm -hmm. um it's exactly what i thought it was gonna be uh, oh. like Ridic ridiculous six i was like this is exactly yeah. what i thought and it's you know just that kind of humor i would if argue he that murder mystery is probably one of the best movies he's made Oh, Murder Mystery is good, yeah. Yeah, and it's going to get a sequel. They're apparently him and Jennifer Aniston at some point will team she's back so up. She's funny, <laughs> and she's great. Yeah, she's got great she's comedy. Crazy, great comedy yeah. chops. I think they should ink a deal with her at Net at Netflix. Well, I mean, she's doing a series on Apple TV, um, that news mor the morning news show. But I would make a multi movie deal with her any day of the week if I was Netflix for some comedies, Jennifer Aniston comedies. Speaking of Adam Sandler, my number third question, the third question for you. There has been talk for years about a Wedding Crashers sequel. 
And now uh, Owen Wilson from Loki uh, was recently interviewed about that. He was asked that question in a recent interview. He said, look, we really want to do Wedding Crashers. It's just a matter of getting it green lit by somebody. After the pandemic's, pandemic's over, me and Vince Vaughn are seriously considering going out and actually crashing real weddings to try to get some interest going for oh a possibility God. of a Wedding Crashers uh, yes. sequel. Yes, please. Yes, I love that movie. I say do a Wedding Crashers tour across the country and crash weddings. But here's my question. Years ago, they were going to do a, a, a mashup movie. Men in Black, the original Men in Black, Will Smith's Men, Men in Black, was going to team up with 21 Jump Street. I actually, no. I, actually, I'll take that back. It was going to be the newer um, Men in Black, I think, with with uh, the younger, the new cast. But I thought they were just doing like I thought it was going to be like Twenty Two Jump Street. Were going to be the MIB agents, but whatever they were. Oh. I, I heard that they were like, okay, that would have been good too. Yeah, I would have been okay with that yes, as a mashup. <laughs> Uh, but I also would have liked to cross over if they had brought in men in black and then they had teamed up with yeah. 22, 22 jump street. Well, how about they do a, here's my pitch. You agree or disagree with this idea. The way to sell the wedding crash or sequel is to make it a mashup with Adam Sandler's wedding singer. Okay. So granted they're in different errors because wedding singer was set in the eighties, but I would skip ahead wedding singer now, which would be kind of an old wedding singer. And crossing over into the wedding crashers story. Mm, what do I'm you think? No, I'm gonna say because, no. No, that's Just because well, then you I don't want to go and I'd rather just the like, if they're keep it separate and like to have one be it, if you're gonna do a sequel of one or the other or both, keep them separate. Just because I I feel like you'd get distracted from like because wedding crashers the the point is like crashing weddings and it's like, what is he just always the singer that you crash the weddings at? Or like, yeah. you know, it, I don't know. It would be a hurdle and I'd rather they just stick to writing the wedding crasher story to make it the best wedding crasher story it can be. You know what I mean? As opposed to have to shoehorn one or the other thing in there to. That's just me. Do you think those universes also don't, don't, blend well with each other well i think well what you could do is like if you wanted to have at one of the um weddings have him be the wedding singer and then maybe at like the last wedding or whatever a cameo come back yeah do a cameo like a ca with at the beginning and then a callback at the end where he's like the guy at the end it's like not you again or something like that but, or an in credit scene with just him <laughs> Where he, they get it, they crash one more wedding. So let's go get, let's do it one more time before we retire. Finally, hang up the shoes of wedding crashing. And the last wedding they crash is wedding singer. Bam. Just throw that to every, throw that everybody's way right at the end. I don't know, but I like yours. Yours is like he's gets a quick, a quick cameo. He, he kind of has a run in with him. Then no, he doesn't show up until later until the end of the movie is what you're saying. Yeah. You'd be on board for that. Yeah. Give it a little, just a little bit of it. Yeah. Okay. He, and he would be kind of. And it'd be hard to get Adam Stanley to do that though. It's the other thing. You, to be you think he's, he's not going to do it. Well, I was about to say to be in so little of it, but he's kind of, he's a good sport sometimes. Like he was on a uh, freaking Brooklyn nine, nine, one episode. That's right. He, <laughs> he came back. And, yeah. <laughs> he came back and did Kevin James uh, last, the last CBS show he had. Kevin, it was a, it was only on for two <clears throat> seasons, but the second season they were really desperate. They were trying to boost the ratings, and they had an episode where Adam Sandler came on, and he was an old buddy of his, and they had they were like a band together or something. I only know this because my parents told me about it. I didn't see that. Yeah. I, didn't actually, I didn't actually see it, but uh, I remember they had tell, told me that he had he had showed up on there uh, for uh, for that as well. Yeah, I didn't see that Kevin James sitcom or whatever it was. At all, I don't even remember it. Yeah, but I have watched his new one on Netflix called yeah. The Crew. Yeah, the race car, the uh, NASCAR show. crew. Yeah, That's well, no, I know. Don't say that because it's not at all a race car show. They never, well, no. never show people no. racing no, or it's, cars. Yeah. And that's just the setting of like this comedy right. show. Like it's the crew that works on the cars. I'm like, they're it's the crew, and he's the crew leader, crew the crew chief, or the, yeah. crew chief, whatever they call it. His head shaved in this in the show. Yeah, I finally gave up. 
No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, see, he fit. Nah, he's just uh, yeah, he went for it, and it's pretty, it's a pretty decent show. I think there's only like ten episodes, but yeah, I uh, like, I like the crew. It's kind of like uh, just good fun. I don't know if they're going to do another season of it, but I liked it. <clears throat> yeah, and what was it? The dad, the black dad from Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, but he's lost a bunch of weight, but he's on it. Yeah, uh, and right. I I always enjoy his performances. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was a it's a fun show. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed it. It's, it's classic Kevin James kind of. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit yeah. it's a little bit different than his past shows because he's not he's not a, he doesn't have a wife. Uh, he's right, not he's married. not like a family man, so he's got yeah. a little bit more of a single mm -hmm. bachelor vibe. Right, and, but it's that yeah. kind of Kevin James funny. I think he's funny too, like his style of humor and the way that he. Oh does yeah, physical comedy too is. Uh, yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. Modern times, uh, in recent years, for me, for physical comedy, he's the guy. As of late, mm -hmm. uh, I still think they could squeeze one more mall cop movie out of Kevin James. How many has he done? Well, he did two, and the last Isn't one, I, I agree. Oh, I, no, <laughs> the last one I don't think was as good. I agree. They did a Las Vegas where he's a Las Vegas security guard. At oh, a, I did know. see that. I was like, yikes. <laughs> but I don't know. I want to see. I want to see, I would like to see a, a third ball cop where he gets teamed up with some like action, like a real action hero, like Liam Neeson, like teams <laughs> up with him for an F for third, third mall cop. And it's like Liam Neeson playing kind of that no nonsense character from taken. Oh, well, didn't uh, he also do that Netflix movie where he was like a writer who wrote yeah. about an assassin. They thought he was yeah. an assassin. So he had to like, he was yeah. trying to be like an assassin. Yeah, it's Kevin, <laughs> it's Kevin James version of an assassin. Oh, mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, I got one closeout for thoughts and advice. Uh, I noticed that that we're talking about Ma I mentioned Masters of the Universe earlier. Netflix is actually going to have two different versions of Masters of the Universe. There's the version that's already come out with the Kevin Smith version, which is is intended to be a continuation of the original 1980s, early 90s Masters of the Universe. It's a sequel to that, um, a continuation. Then there's a second one. A trailer was just released for it that is a complete reboot of Masters of the Universe. And the uh -oh. two will sit side by side next to each other, but but be their own unique things. And the animation for the, uh, the reboot is in 3D. It's a lot more modern. It has a bit of an anime vibe to it. And it's going to get rid of all the cheesiness and just get down to business what? of being a modern masters of the universe. So they, they said yeah. the new one is intended for younger audiences. The older one is intended for the retro nostalgia audience to appeal to them. So here's my thought thoughts and advice. Could this become a model? If this is successful for Netflix with these two different versions, a masters of the universe, could this become a model for other IPs or has it already become a model for other IPs to have a, retro nostalgia version like what would be michael keaton's batman and still have the modern updated version which might be robert pattinson's batman i don't know for dc do you think i mean what are your thoughts on that do you think that could be a new thing going forward if that's successful where star wars might put out <clears throat> a different star wars that's for the younger audience and they may be doing the same thing too because they've got an anime star wars visions that they just dropped a trailer for well, that looks awesome. Yeah, but I'm also a big fan of when they did like the Animatrix, and they did the same thing for Batman. They had a bunch of anime. There was like a yeah, the, yeah. I forget what that one was called. Um, but they also did it for Halo. Mm -hmm. And I, frankly, I love that. I love when they get yeah. anime studios together. Yeah. And also, a lot of Star Wars was inspired by yeah. like Kurosawa and Samurai, and mm -hmm. as well as westerns and some other stuff. But I mean, there was big influence there of the. Mm -hmm. eastern influence and so i just watched the trailer recently and i was like this looks crazy but that's but you got it you, there are going to be a lot of people who probably aren't going to get it but those people probably aren't anime fans like in any yeah. sense of the word anyone that gets anime like at all sees this and they're like oh cool star wars anime and like different styles of anime and like yes that bunny person is kind of too on the nose to be like an alien or whatever but 
it's a star it's a you know that's what the studio went with and it's got it's like anime with star wars themes mm -hmm. i'm interested to see where they go with it and i i'm probably yeah. not gonna love everyone but i'll enjoy them all i'm sure yeah yeah you know it's, it's time for star wars to to branch out and they're they are going to branch out i mean even i mean it, there is a I mean, I'm the biggest Star Wars fan in the world, but there's a time when there's there can be. I mean, I mean I've I've got, you know, right here, BB BB on my te on my desk, and then you know, my son from his Happy Meal gift he got an extra Boba oh, Fett. He gifted, he gifted me the his extra Boba Fett. That was very nice of him. But uh, I love my Star Wars. But they can be. There's a redundancy sometimes with Star Wars. Uh, when you have a New Hope. Mandalorian and now the Bad Batch. I mean, to me, Luke Skywalker, Baby Yoda, Omega, the same characters basically. You know, the stories, there's a lot of synchronicity and similarity between those three stories. Um, so somebody wanting to go out and see the bigger universe. Well, that's from their, you know, every story. That's the hero's journey, is yeah. That's true. Expanding that's true. into a wider universe. Uh, I mean, that's that's the basic, you know, how is a story told? Well, you start off with the everyday life. What is the setting yeah. that this person lives in? Then you have to break away from that because you have to show what their normal life is to ha to and show how yeah. anything else is different. That's why when you first meet Luke Skywalker, okay, he lives on a farm. He's a farm worker and he's in a speck of nowhere in the galaxy. Um, when you meet Iron Man, Okay, he's a weapons dealer. What he does is he, yeah. you know, you establish the character first in the normalcy, and then they break into the larger world, which they yeah. don't understand, and that challenges them to overcome things and to learn how to deal with this new world. And then once they learn how to do that, then they can, you know, complete the circle and take that knowledge that they gained from their trials and use it to better the universe. That's fair. That's fair. But I mean. It, they are there's gonna be a time when and they're they've done a little bit of it but i think branching out and doing something just wild like i mean well, yeah star, you can I bring mean, away wars, that's the traditional heroes journey thing but you don't have yeah. to tell every story like that no, I and think that's the what they should yeah. do is like there's other styles of storytelling um you know and that's kind of what that anime thing is also going to help show because that yeah. they're all different styles of not just animation but also like there's probably going to be one where it's mostly talking and then there's going to be another one where it's just like non-stop action, you know, cause right. anime, they're right. different, you know, they're different. So yeah, you pacing. can have differently paced stories. So like in star Wars, since it's that huge universe that spans so much time, you can have like ancient knights, Jedi knights fighting, you know, saber battles, or you can have like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, spy missions, uh, espionage stuff, or you can have bank robbers, or you can have bounty hunters, or you can have, you know, anything that exists, Westerns, you yeah. know, the aesthetic of star Wars is like no other. You can do anything. So they, it's, yeah, it's the time to star Wars is the greatest ever, the aesthetic. And we know that, um, with rogue squadron, you know, that's going to be a fighter pilot story. That's going to, yeah. you know, so that's not going to be your traditional, right. like, and the, like the, they shouldn't even do any more like episodic, in my opinion, they've made so many mistakes with the sequel trilogy that I don't even like to right. think of that as, a, but you know, the episodic what that, that has a certain style to them and you can take pieces of that style and use it in other things, but you don't have to like the way that they do wipes. That's something yeah. that's in like a lot of different star Wars media. Like even in the bad batch, they usually use wipes, but you don't have to, if you want to tell a yeah. different type of story, then maybe you wouldn't use that edit. Maybe you would like, put the pacing different maybe the setting of where it's taking place is going to be different so absolutely yeah there's so it's a huge universe and there's so much of it that they haven't used on screen well it's like james gunn said he likes to take a another genre and then use that as his blueprint for how he's going to approach doing a superhero movie like he was suicide squad he said i'm using 70s war movies as my as aesthetic and style for suicide squad and that's what makes for me continues to make, <laughs> yeah, makes it more fun. So with Star Wars, same thing. You could take a different, a set, like a different genre and mash that up with Star Wars and you could, could you could go forever with that. And that's kind of what the Mandalorian has already started doing. Yeah. yeah, I think you were just about to say that, but well, space Western or space wandering Western. samurai kind of. Yeah. 
now anime and then this the fighter pilot uh star wars that's going to be the i don't know kind of the fighter pilot war movie top gun of star top wars. gun yeah top gun, it's top gun of star wars that's what it is if they do it right and if they, if they do it right and and they I think patty know, jenkins is gonna give this her best effort um yeah her dad was a fighter pilot and she's been looking to do like a fighter pilot movie so i think she'll do her best to make this pretty awesome and, and dare i say we may live to see the day that we see a star wars comedy uh a series live action star wars comedy i don't know yeah. um could happen yeah i mean i'd i think you'd be more likely to well it might. They already had pitched one like a while ago. Yeah. But... Well, there's robot. The stuff with robot chicken. Well, which that's is... not like actual Star Wars. Or that's right. parody. I was gonna say you might yeah. get a parody like that, kind of like the Orville. The Orville is not Star Trek, right? But it's using the themes and like the aesthetic yeah. of Star Trek to. It's yeah. a parody, but it's a really well done parody, also. Yeah. yeah. Like. Oh like yeah, you, you're. It's made by someone who's like, hey, I liked Star Trek, and let me make this show that's like basically Star Trek, but for comedy. And some people say it's better than the current Star Trek new shows. I've seen people say that, and I haven't watched those shows, so I can't say that. But mm -hmm. I just know, like, I appreciate it for the humor and the setting, yeah. and the humor in that setting, and it's fun yeah. because I know what they're basing it off of, mm -hmm. like. And, yeah. and that and what they are basing it off of and this is probably why some people say they like it better is that classic trek they right. love that classic trek this show loves that classic trek and it's it shows in the storylines that they use and the jokes that they tell yeah yeah i'm, I'm pretty excited and they just finished season three filming it or whatever so oh yeah uh, yeah they celebrated the uh, other day with a picture so yeah he's and he really was a big uh seth mcfarlane huge star trek fan in real oh, yeah. life yeah, he in fact he wanted to make Star Trek. He wanted to do Star Trek. If you Trek. look at the yeah. interviews when he first came out with Family Guy, that dude used to be a huge nerd. And like then he Hollywooded <laughs> up. All oh, right. Yeah. And he can yeah. do voices. So he's constantly doing this, you know, voice. Da, da, da. But mm -hmm. uh I don't even like and maybe that is like his regular voice, but I watched some of those first interviews and I was like, look at this nerd. Which I could say because I'm also a nerd. Um, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. You're but not. then you know, he got money. So it's like if I had tons of money and you could pay, it's like Make me look awesome before I go host the Grammys. Like, yeah, you're gonna do that. You're gonna do it. Yeah, give me. I mean, go in and get implant muscles and get a blowout. Yeah, get a blowout. Let's see. Go to the doctor. Hey, what, but right now, do? if I show up to a Grammys, they're like, "What's Fat Mitch Hedberg doing here?" <laughs> oh man, no YouTube sensation. What's the YouTube sensation? Yeah, What's Chris Cassidy doing here. That's uh, what they would say. That's that's exactly that's what, what they Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is it really you? That's what they would do. Chris Cassidy, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap it up for this 150th. Everybody out there, have a good day, hour, second, millisecond. Stay alive. Be safe. Good night. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production.